Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today on our Monday live training. Um, so today's, we've done this in the past, but I just feel like it's always great to talk about. And I've also received lots of questions about, about it because we talk about it often. So are you sabotaging your health by focusing only on one or two of the seven pillars of health? I mean, that could be the deciding factor on what's happening with your health, right? Because there's seven of them and we really must focus on all seven. So today what we're going to do is we're going to discuss all seven. We're going to go into a little bit of detail about each one. We're going to talk about why missing just even one of these pillars can be what's preventing you from optimal health and a little bit of a step-by-step -step guide on how to conquer these because seven's a lot and it can be overwhelming. And then of course, tying into our supplements that, that help um, along the way. Yeah, you guys, the seven pillars is just something that we've landed on. It's nothing like set in stone or any real like true uh, like medical advice. Right. This is just areas of, of interest that we think that people should be working on daily. Yes. But you might have a pillar of your own. You may have something else. You may have something like, well, we'll go over yeah. it. And a lot know? of times some other ones can be incorporated into a pillar. So I'll kind of touch on that as, as we go through for sure. So again, thanks for joining us. If this is your first time, welcome. We do this, Dr. Ryan and I do this training every Monday. We bring to you a either a hot topic or one that we feel very important that's very important or passionate about. And also obviously anytime we launch new products, we always do a training on them here. So make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss anything. And you can also go back and watch our post ones because yeah. we've been doing these weekly for a very long time. Uh, make sure you like, leave comments. Um, at the end of these, we also do answer questions. So obviously if it pertains to you know health and wellness and the topic that we're discussing. So make sure you write those questions in so we can tackle them at the end, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so I mean, we're just going to dive into the seven pillars because it's going to take a little bit to go through each one. Um, and this is nothing new. It's nothing that you've not heard of, but we just want to reiterate the importance of these. Um, so I'll just go through and I'll, I'll say the seven. Yeah, so yeah. Name them off. We have supplementation, diet, or nutrition. Yeah, nutrition. I, I, yeah, I don't really like to say diet because everybody thinks about some specific diet, but really diet is what you're putting in your body. But let's just say nutrition. Yeah. Um, exercise, movement sleep, stress, hydration, and socialization. And, you know, we feel very strongly the importance of, of really hitting on each of these uh, pillars is how you can achieve optimal health, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, look, there's like I, uh, the spirituality is one we don't talk, we don't go into here, but I think right. is a big part of that. And, um, faith, you know, so certainly guys, again, make this your own, make right. it work for you. I typically would put hydration under nutrition, but I get that it's a carve out. Sure. I mean, you could tie some of them under and it could be the, the seven pillars, but yeah. again, like these are what Dr. Ryan what, and I seven? feel. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying you could take, take you could away. combine two and it could uh, be the six, God. but you know, we just put these as, as our seven that we really like to focus on. Um, and I want you to think about like, these are seven things that, that each and every one of you must invest in specific protocols for each day. Like this isn't just like, oh, today I'm going to work on my stress. Tomorrow I'm going to work on my nutrition. Like this is investing in each one of these every day. And again, we'll go into tips on kind of how to do that. So um, let's start with supplementation. I mean, obviously we live good. You know, we bring to you the highest quality nutritional supplements at prices that everybody can afford. So I want you to understand that supplementation is always going to be a major pillar. Why is that? Because we always have nutri nutrient deficiencies. We talk about this all the time. I mean, almost every single person has at least one vitamin or mineral deficiency. And that could be the key thing to helping your body function properly, right? To be like metabolically stable. Um, and achieving optimal health. Why do I keep saying optimal? Because we, we want to strive to be our best. We want to strive to have that optimal health. We don't just want to, to get by, merely get by with basic health and survivability. Like we really want strong optimal, optimal health. So supplementation is often the, the key, the missing key. But another thing about supplementation is when you're looking at these seven pillars that, that we're talking about, and it can be overwhelming. How do I tackle them all? Each one takes a little bit of um, more time. Supplementation is very easy. Why is it? Because you buy the supplements, you open up the container, you take the take the pill every day. You just need to to have a consistent routine. All of these are gonna have need to have a routine. You know, so you know, getting your little pill caddy, sorting them all through, making sure you're taking everything as prescribed, not just like I'm gonna take my multivitamin 
on Monday and Tuesday, and then I kind of forgot Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, here I am again, Saturday, Sunday, I'm going to take them. Like it's about consistency with everything. Again, establishing a routine, investing in these every single day. Um, what do you want to highlight on supplements? Uh, yeah, just the need for them. You know, if you exercise, you sweat, you perspire, you need them. If you drink alcohol, if you drink caffeine, if you take a lot of medications, calls, nutrient deficiencies, right. you know, uh, Stress or anxiety can cause can contribute to it as well. There's a lot of reasons why we need to supplement. It is easy, like you said. Now it's affordable, but there's one thing too missing. I don't. I would say it's better not to supplement than it is to take some supplement that is either very poor quality or mm -hmm. of things that you don't know why you're taking it. So you should always sort of have some sense of why am I taking this, what to expect from it, how long should I be using it. Those are the things that you really need to be able to clearly answer sure. to feel good about what you're paying for and putting in your body. Right. And like we do a, a very good job about being transparent, telling you everything that's in it and why and how. Um, but if you are using other supplements, like read the ingredients, kind of do your research on um, how they do their testing. If you see an ingredient in a product and you're like, well, that's not part of the, that's not part of the vitamin D. So what is that? Look it up, see what it's used for. Why is it there? Is it necessary? So they're, they're again, they're, like Ryan really mentioned, and I didn't even think about that, but there are so many things that are put into supplements that can actually do more harm than good. So make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, okay, we're gonna bump up over to just calling it nutrition. It's basically focusing on quality nutrition every day, every single day. You've got to make sure you're putting high quality nutrition into your body. This is whole food sources. Um, if it's not all whole food, it's very minimally processed. Like you really have to focus on this. This does take a lot of work. It takes planning. Um, but again, this is investing in your health. So each one of these pillars need to be invested in every day. We're not going to just eat really well Monday through Thursday. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we just eat crap and, you know, put toxins into our body. So again, daily nutrition, something we've got to be focused on high quality whole foods. When I talk about whole foods, what I'm referring to, um, basically your outer edges of those grocery stores. If you want to think about that, you're your dairy, your your meats, your seafoods, your fruits, your vegetables. I mean, this is what our body was designed to eat, not those packaged boxes and bags and yeah. stuff like that. Minimize the amount of barcodes that you open. There you go. I bags. Like yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. But you can break the rules. I mean, that's not like a hard thing where every meal is this perfect whole food based thing. So I know there's a, sure. you know, Reality, we sense of reality. Live. We have yes. to live and you'll be out to eat and you'll do this. But that's why you'll take along your detox and your shill legit and you'll do those things because you know you're going to break the rules sometimes. So right. that's okay. Right. But yeah. But sometimes just think about this. Like I don't want you to think intentionally today I'm going to go out and I'm going to eat junk and just, I mean, I deserve this. I, well, I mean, why do you deserve to poison your body? Yeah, exactly. You know, it should be like I'm going to go get this really high quality expensive you know, steak with, uh, you know, a nice baked potato. Maybe these are things you wouldn't like have on a regular basis, but you don't have to go and eat the junk that, you know, puts all the toxins in you. And just know that no matter what, every time you're eating out, um, nine times out of 10, they're using, you know, seed oils or inflammatory oils. They're not really using the higher quality, more expensive ones like your olive oil and your coconut oil and your avocado oil. So just by going out and eating out, we're already doing some, you know, Service, I, and I think we would dive deep into this. We, have we done a topic just on nutrition and food alone? I don't know, I don't know because that's one of the more passionate can. areas that we really do sure. spend a lot of time and effort in. Obviously, we're just scratching the surface right now today. But really, that is an area that we probably put the most emphasis on. And, you know, that's the, probably the best investment you'll ever make is in 100%. the foods that you eat. So yeah. um, food is like medicine. Yep, for sure. Right. And awesome. then um, exercise or movement. So we need to be moving our body every day. We need to be intentional about it. You know, not just, I mean, it's great if we now do the standing desks or a treadmill desk and, and stuff like that. We're, we're becoming more aware. Maybe we're getting up um, from our desk. If you have a desk, job, maybe you're getting up from your desk every 20 minutes and you're like walking around your building. If not, it's a great idea. But these are, these are great ways to add more movement into your life. But I also want you to think about um, and being intentional about your daily exercise. So you're setting aside time. And if you want to think about it in the scheme of like a whole week, you know, there's different, um, there's different kinds of exercise from your, your zone two, your lower heart rate, that's your cardio, your higher heart rate or your VO2 max work. That's really high. Maybe like your hit um, activities, 
high intensity interval training, and then your strength stuff. And you really need to have um, a balance of them all each week, but really it's about like 150 to 220 minutes of like your zone two. When I say zone two, I know many of you might not know what that is, but it's a lower heart rate zone. We are breathy, but we can fully hold a conversation. This is maybe super fast, brisk walking, walking up an incline, you know, a longer bike ride. Um, so anytime that you can incorporate these in very important, split them up through your week, try to get, get those, those minutes in. Um, and then, you know, VO2 max, high intensity work, that's necessarily just one, like one to two times a week. I mean, one time a week is not, your, your, your heart just needs that to be stressed. Um, and then the strength training, as we always talk about, like muscles, the first sign of aging begins in our 30s, where we start to lose that muscle mass. And unfortunately, that's just going to happen. So we have to work even harder to prevent that happening. Um, yeah. So again, exercise, intentional movement every day, set aside time. Like I don't say like skimp on sleep to wake up early and do it, but I mean, go to bed earlier so then you can get up and get that workout in before you have to start get, you know, get ready for the day. But again, you need to look at your day and find time to set aside for that intentional exercise that intentional movement every day. You can't exercise your way out of a terrible diet either. No, so exactly. it's another, yeah. definitely encourage exercise every day. Right. But this is why I'm also saying we need to focus on all seven. So sure. you can't, you know, you can't out exercise a bad diet hundred percent, but if you're tackling all of these pillars and you're intentional about each one, you're not doing that. You're, you're doing everything that your body needs to thrive. Here's another one you would, Patrick would add is a mental health and mindset to the list. If you're defeated in your mind, making excuses, beating yourself up, you'll go nowhere. So thank you, Patrick. Yes. And I, that totally is thank under hundred percent. That's totally under for our, our mindset under socialization, because it really has to do a lot with your, your mental health and, and, um, and a little bit about stress too, right? So stress and social, socialization in there. Um, okay. Let's hop over to sleep. Um, sleep is very challenging um, because there's so many things that disrupt our sleep. But the biggest thing that I want you to think about is trying to get those seven to nine. Some bodies are, are, are good at, at six. So, you know, seven to nine, six to eight, somewhere in there. But this also needs to be quality sleep. And that's, I think, the, I think the biggest struggle with, you know, our livelihoods these days is the quality. Like we're drinking caffeine too late. So even though we may be able to fall asleep, our st sleep stages are affected. So you're not actually getting that good, restful, deep sleep that you need. Um, and also obviously we're stressed out and we have, our minds are kind of going like this all the time. So we might have that interrupted sleep or we're waking up too much. Um, so you need to be intentional about that. You need to do what you can to help you sleep. We probably should do another training solely on sleep too, because we did this a long time ago, but I work so hard on my sleep because I've never been a good sleeper. So it just means I have to pay so much more attention to it. Um, and so lots of tips and tricks. But a big thing is, is be consistent about your routine. So it doesn't have to be to the T. It doesn't have to be like every night, I'm uh, lights out 930, but somewhere it, within that half an hour. And that means also your waking up time somewhere within that half an hour of the same thing each day. If you establish a good, consistent sleep routine, it will help you get the adequate quality sleep that you need. We should do another Zoom on sleep. Yeah. For sure. It's so important. It's, it's funny. My, it's a, our daughter actually said she was complaining about me to someone the other day. And she was saying, all my mom wants to do is make sure you get your sleep and make sure you eat your protein. And it was kind of funny to hear her yeah, say that funny. because it's very true, but there are two big things that I drill into my children. It's like, like they wonder why we have to have lights out at a certain time I'm like, because you need to be up by a certain time. So I know that you need to have your sleep. So um, it's two things I really push in and still in our children is the sleep and protein. <laughs> You should definitely, mm -hmm. so I was just doing a little video on just like kind of morning routine, but I can't like talk morning routine without sleep. And I was just thinking like, geez, you know, when the first thing you do is wake up, you don't really want to be waking up to some obnoxious alarm clock. Like your body really should just mm -hmm. have this natural rhythm, whether it's your circadian, circadian or just your discipline of habit and just going to bed at the same time in your body's. But you should be waking up feeling pretty good. You shouldn't wake up feeling, oh my gosh, today is going to be brutal. I can't wait to go back to bed. And, sure. and that's, that's just because if you're waking up that way, then ch change your nighttime routine and get to bed a little bit earlier. Right. But um, two hours of deep, two hours of, of REM. I know that's an aggressive Hard. goal. That's a, mm -hmm. not an easy thing to accomplish. But if you measure your sleep, 25% uh, of your sleep should be in either one of those, both of those categories. So yeah, so yeah try for it. Use a sleep tracker. And you might mm -hmm. be sitting here saying, well, how much sleep do I need? You just said like six to nine. 
if you are feeling tired throughout the day, like like Ryan just said, I can't wait to go to bed or yeah. I need I need a nap. Now naps like little siestas are good. <laughs> like I'm talking like a 20 minute cat nap, right? That's okay. That's actually really beneficial. Some people do really well um, with productivity, like being able to do that 20 minute cat nap. But if you find yourself needing to take like an hour, hour and a half nap in the middle of the day, yeah, every yeah, day, wrong. your sleep at night is not working for you. Either A, you're not getting enough or B, it's not good quality. So you're not feeling rested. So just assess things, make changes, shift. I mean, you're in charge of your body. You have to take care of yourself. All right, let's go to stress. Yeah, Have something. sure. No, go. Yes, no processed foods. Yes. So, um, okay. Stress. Stress is okay. It's an it's an important part of our life. Yeah, yeah. Right? We want we, we want to have some, some good kind stress. of stresses for sure. But we're overly stressed. So I want you to think about having two different tools, like um, stress management tools for like real time stress, like big stressful situation just comes up and we need to we need to do something to to decompress to get rid of our stress, and also the um, if you want to talk it like long term stress is the everyday stress that. We just want to make sure it does not continue to build and leave us in that constant, you know, fight or flight kind of state. So when I talk about first for real time tools, think about your deep breathing. Oh my, you know, something really stressful just happened. Something at work, your kids are making crazy. It's a, it's a, a situational um, stress. And I want you to think about a breathing exercise. It's very, very easy to do. Um, you don't even have to leave your room. You just deep inhale. So all the way. Once you get to the top and you feel like you can't suck in anymore, another little inhale and then deep exhale, slowly let it go. I mean, you could do this, you know, two, six times, whatever it is. But even if you do it just that one time, like I already just felt like, ooh, you kind of just feel like you already relaxed yourself. So it kind of just changes your mindset and, and allows you to handle the situation. Um, and then the longer stress, let's just talk about raising your Raising your stress threshold is what I want to refer to it as because it's how we perceive stress, how we handle stress, how we deal with stress. That's what you need to work on on a regular basis, whether this is from doing um, meditation, right, daily meditation, yoga practices, um, just being in nature every day, somehow getting that time to, to be walking outside. All of these things help us handle life stressors better because, again, we're going to be presented with these every single day, no matter what. It's just life. Yeah, I mean, that's the concept of hormesis, right? Look up the word hormesis for those that don't know it, and you certainly see what that's all about. That's your that's your body's natural uh, approach to dealing with uh, whether environmental or physiological or physical stress. I mean, that's what we do when we say sauna. That's what we do when we talk about cold lunch oh or cold showers. Mm -hmm. You know, you're simulating that. You're you're simulating yeah, a typical response to something where your body would go naturally into a, a response mode to that uh, stressor. And so we love that stuff. That's the good stuff, the right. good stress in the body, the way of dealing with things like common colds and flus and scrapes and bruises and broken bones and you know these different things. It's great. It's wonderful. But that system is optimized and works the best when it's not in this chronic low-grade inflammatory state for a long time, which is what happens when we have a massive, like a, a load of stress where the cortisol response right. is, is, is up and, you know, you're just, your, your body's just kind of starts to become fatigued to it, right? Like there's a certain level of fatigue that sets in. I know there's a whole biochemical process there, but again, managing the good and the bad stress, identifying the two, when there's bad, you can do breathing, you can do different things. You can, there's a lot of different things. Um, and I know we've done a zoom on that as well. Yes. Yeah, and the, the cold shower, cold water submersion is, you know, very, very beneficial. And you might be one of those sitting there thinking like, I hate cold water. I can't do it. Nope. Well, that was also me. But I didn't want to say I can't because I know I can. I don't like it. I hate cold water. I hate the feeling of shivering. I hate it. Yeah, but it. you do great at it. But I go in. Yeah. We, we do have a cold plunge now. I go in almost every day yeah, or maybe five days a week. But if you don't, it's also just at the end of your shower, just stand there for three minutes yeah sure or even even a down. minute just let that water rush in your head your face it is doable guys it's it's not it's not going to kill you i promise you that but it does so much for um how you hormesis how you respond to stress yeah so hormesis. i want you to focus on that because also like think about if your stress is really high what's also going to be affected you're not going to be sleeping yeah and also if the cortisol is super high what do we do we start we gain fat and it tends to be around our midsection yeah. right oh what if you're sitting there that person i can't i just can't seem to lose fat around my midsection i mean it it's probably very hormonal and cortisol is a hormone, stress right, well, hormone. 
So before you go on to the next topic, so Patrick, just a real quick thing here. So you suggest digestive enzymes. It includes the green tea lipase, amylase, and romaline. Check it out because we already have that gut support. It's low, it has a big-time gut support complex, but also our lean. So our body composition improvement formula has the caroluma. It also has digestive enzymes. Patrick, check that out. I'm surprised you didn't know about that. All right. Yes, yeah, brother in Tampa. Oh, my gosh. Telling you, we're praying for Tampa. We are. We're goodness. definitely praying for Tampa. A lot of comments coming in from Tampa and the west coast of Florida. Yeah, so we are on the east coast. We don't know exactly what conditions we'll see. Maybe tropical storm strength. We'll see. But um, we're not going to bear the brunt like the west coast is. All right. What's next? Um, hydration. Simple right. to talk about. We actually just recently did a hydration training because we have our hydration amplifier. Um, just going to grab that. But most specifically, like it's very important to get your adequate fluid intake, but also know that water alone is just not going to cut it. You have to have the electrolytes that are going to help to know where your body is going to absorb that water and, you know, distribute it properly. So just, um, it also allows, I mean, our cells are made up of mostly water. Like we need to hydrate them to allow them to work properly for us. So hydration can definitely be con con combined with, you know, nutrition. Um, but we just wanted to put it out there because sometimes it gets yeah. overlooked. You know, I, I, I know a lot of people that try to avoid drinking water because they hate going to the bathroom all the time. Like I know it's annoying, but like, think about it. Like what's worse, like yeah. to just yeah. be annoyed because you have to get up and use the restroom or now we understand at nighttime, like you try to slow down, but the big, the goal is to get all that water in in the earlier yeah, parts front of the day. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, after dinner, I try really hard to just have like minimal sips of water because, you know, I don't want to have my sleep interrupted. Okay. And then the last one um, is socialization. And this has a lot to do with, with mental health as well, but your social connection. And I, you know, I have it, uh, the Surgeon General quoted, and I'm just going to read it here for you. Mm -hmm. Given the significant health consequences of loneliness and isolation, we must prioritize building social connection the same way we have prioritized other critical public health itch issues, such as smoking tobacco, obesity, and substance use disorders. So literally putting, the Surgeon General is putting like social isolation up with that with obesity. I mean, so if you put, if you look at that, I mean, those two alone, I mean, it's crazy that you can put them in the same category that we need to focus on, but it's so true. And it really is often overlooked because we just, Oh, just well, I, I don't I don't suspect this is just an American issue, but it's certainly I bet you America ranks the highest in this type of category, which sucks. It's terrible. But like Simona here just says hello from from Italy. But Italy probably does not have this same issue from what I understand. Like the Italy's are all about family and they're all about community and they live in place. They age out together. Right. And so I understand Italy and some of these other European countries and um do a very good job of that. And I'm envious of that because I think our country is doing a terrible job right. to the point where we have a surgeon general issuing a warning on it. It's right. just so disappointing. It is. So like do the best you can sign up for, for groups. Um, if you like to read, join a reading club. I mean, you can find all these resources online, you know, whether it's, it's a church or a temple, just some kind of, you know, that, that host and, and community it wants to bring a sense yeah. of community. Um, even if it's just in your, in your neighborhood, um, uh, you go on walks, find somebody else that wants to walk with you. Just it's that it's that social interaction, that communication. It is so important for our, our mental health. And it really does play a major role into how our body functions as a whole. And that's the biggest thing. Our body does function as a whole. We don't function in parts. So like we need to focus on all these to have optimal health so we can function as a whole. And do your best to avoid social situations that stress us or tax us. I know it's impossible to avoid it all, but if you start to notice like maybe like you're hanging out with this group and every time you're there, you feel very stressed out or you leave and you feel so emotionally taxed, remove yourself if you can. You know, maybe that's not the best thing for yeah. you because, mm -hmm. you know, that could be more harmful than. Yes. Harmful. Yeah. And the power of no is important too. Yeah. So, you know, if you're in a toxic environment, yeah, remove yourself. It's, no, uh, yeah. it's not working for you. Yeah. So bottom line, we're not easy. Seven. Without these seven pillars implemented daily, like you, you cannot achieve your optimal health. Again, we function as a whole. Each little part needs to be intentionally focused on. And this is a daily thing. Now, of course, every day is not perfect. I'm telling you, I mean, I'm not saying I sit here and try to work on my stress every single day, but I do try to make it a part of, of my, you know, weekly practice of just trying to, you know, do things that can help me better adapt sure. to stress. Sure. Yeah. No, it's, it's being more mindful, I think. Yes, yeah, definitely being more mindful. 
Um, I have so many questions and comments, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of staring at my computer screen, just breezing down these. Um, so, well, I'll just so I'll just talk about a little bit how to, I guess, our suggestions and like how to conquer these. Because again, you look at these all, and you can't just say, okay, I'm going to do all seven starting tomorrow. I mean, you can kudos to that, but it's hard. So pick one and get it down. So if you aren't taking supplements or if you are, but you're inconsistent and you don't really have a routine, start there, get your supplements. Like I said, do them in little pill caddies and get a routine going. Okay. Now we've got this down. Boom. I've got my supplements. I'm taking them every day. I have what my body needs. Move on to the next one. Pick what, whichever one you want. Say it's hydration. Cause that's kind of easy too. I'm just going to make sure I'm taking one of these in my water every day. I'm going to be drinking my, you know, hundred ounces of water. It's really Half your body weight mm -hmm. in ounces sure. of water. We feel like you should be drinking more than that, especially if you're losing fluid through sweat. But again, it's always a good goal. So you know, pick the pick the hydration. Then say, okay, I'm going to start. I'm going to start exercising. I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to do what Lisa and Ryan just talked about, and I'm going to get my zone two and my one time a week of high heart rate and my strength training in there. And you know, when you think about it like that, like you don't have to do all these every every single day, but over, you know, cumulative of the week, it's doable, right? It's very doable. And you don't have to spend hours doing it. Um, so one by one, step by step. And as you do them, I promise the other ones will become easier, right? So again, like getting, getting good quality sleep will become easier when you focus on your stress and going forward. Okay. So, you know, I was thinking um, one thing to say is comment here. She does wake, she doesn't wake up feeling the dread of the day, but wakes up feeling pretty Grotty or groggy most days. People don't realize. I'm not suggesting you stop taking prescription drugs, but a lot of drugs interact. Inter they intervene in a chemical process somewhere, like an enzyme inhibitor. There's a lot of those statin drugs and enzyme inhibitors, ACE and enzyme for blood pressures, beta blockers. Those all have downstream effects. I'm not saying they all negatively impact sleep, but then you have drugs for sleep, which also are not actually giving you that restorative sleep you're looking for. So there's a lot of things that could be contributing to a poor night's rest. You really got to take a holistic point of view, mm -hmm. step back, and really try to adopt a lot of these things that Lisa just talked about and include as much as you can with ease. Don't, don't, don't drive yourself mad, but kind of start focusing on these things and you'll see, a, you'll see a transformation. There's no doubt. Right. And also, like I said, once you start tackling one at a time, the other ones will kind of be easier and fall into place. Sure you'll start feeling better and your body will start working better for you. So, and also if there is a medication that you have to be on because you have high blood pressure, so you start tackling this other stuff and maybe your blood pressure goes down. Now the it, medication's uh, gone with your doctor's help and there you go, you're sleeping better. And so. look at this one, Liz. This is a funny one because it's true. Hey, Melanie. <laughs> yeah. You, well, you, you're, you got me too. Me. I have a snoring problem. You can get a mouth and or thought or piece for the mouth. You can try the CPAP, but a separate room. Yeah. I know that's, you know, but the biggest thing is too, I mean, that doesn't help him because he's still snoring. So we right. went through this for a very long time and we were trying different ways to figure out how to help, help Dr. Ryan over snoring. here. So yeah. he wasn't snoring because I was losing sleep. It, it was killing me. Um, but yes, so he found something that worked for him. He's got a, his dentist and made this mouthpiece. I'm not saying it's going to work for everybody, but it works magically for him. And that means he's also sleeping better because when you're snoring, you're interrupting your sleep. You're not getting a quality sleep. You have lack of oxygen, all that yes. stuff. So you, you want to work on your sleep as well as, as your husband. So check out options out there. But like I said, the dentist is the one that does the yeah, appliance mm -hmm. for your mouth. The appliance, that's the word. Thank game you. Game changer. And this essential oils thing, lavender is his favorite for David. True. Lavender. second um all right sorry guys so sorry sleep. so we'll, we'll wrap it up but sleep is obviously right. the one that you guys are resonating the most with yeah. look there's a ton of it here about sleep thank you guys so much for the comments and chiming in and i wanted to just pull together some of our live good supplements that we personally feel like are so extremely crucial to be taking every single day um, for optimal health obviously we, we have a lot of products we keep adding more on um I mean, I keep adding them into my routine because I know the benefits. Obviously, we make them for those reasons. But I want you to always know, like, fact, the factor for getting rid of that inflammation, um, our daily essentials pack, multivitamin, magnesium, and vitamin D, 
These are all to help eliminate the nu nutrient deficiencies that we have. Gut health. I almost feel like this needs to be like a pillar on its own because it is so important. It's gut health, oral health. It all kind of combines into it, but it's so important for your overall health. So a probiotic is amazing. I talked about the muscle mass, how we lose. Naturally, we lose it as we start to age. And that happens in our 30s when we don't even feel like we're really aging. Essential aminos, very important for that. Should be taken by everybody. Um, protein, you hear me say protein, protein, protein. So crucial. We do have our two protein powders that are very helpful to help get that um, 20 grams. This is 20 grams of protein for like 100 calories. So it really helps because I know I get the question is how do I eat basically my body weight in grams of protein? That's crazy. Or my ideal body weight in grams of protein. But using the protein powders really helps because again, it's just a little delicious drink for 100 calories, but you're getting 20 grams of protein. Big, big, big deal. You know, another, another pillar could be toxic, toxin avoidance. We, sure. we, for some reason, don't have that on there. Patrick just made me think about it when he said the dryer ball idea. I'm like, Love yeah, that's another ball. thing. We always reference avoidance of toxins and how important that is from environmental and different aspects with different areas we pick it up. So yeah. thank and you. If you don't know what dryer balls all, just look, you get them on Amazon, wool dryer balls, and they help to remove like the lint and help your um, be throwing in your dryer, but also you put essential oils on the ball. So I'll do lavender for like our sheets and towels. And then for our clothing, maybe I'll do a little bit of lemon, maybe lemon and peppermint combo. It just kind of freshens it up and you don't need to use those toxic dryer sheets. So toxic. Guys, so. thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, I saw some comments that maybe some things that we haven't answered before, like show legit with blood pressure issues. Like there's a, you know, there's really nothing in there that would be con contradictive to, to the meds. You know, Shilajit is really just a, mi a trace mineral supplement, and it's awesome in so many ways. Um, but email me if you have any questions. I do see somebody that said they emailed me six days ago. Sorry, I do get a lot of emails. Lisa does a better it, job than me. She yeah. just, she stays really on top of emails, guys. I don't know how she does it. Yeah. It's actually impressive. But again, my, my role is, you know, director of product education. So like I am really making, make myself available to you guys to be able to answer your questions. So if you've sent something to Ryan, send it to me, send it to both of us. I'll get to it first. And if I need yeah. his help answering something, if it's something, you know, a medication question, I know where he lives. I just love the way you guys are all into this commenting and so grateful. I'm very grateful for all of you as well. So guys, we'll be keeping an eye on the storm. We are not here next Monday. We are traveling abroad oh, yes. for any of our friends in Scotland. Oh. Uh, but yes, we will not be here next Monday. So we'll see you in two weeks. Uh, hopefully, uh, all right. things go as Which planned. Which also would depend on if we how we get in when we get in. That yeah, so that flight back in. So, thank you again, everybody. We'll see you next time. Yes, and again, make sure if you don't already like, subscribe to our channel. 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 Always leave your comments and check out our products. Livegood.com. We have so many things there to offer you. Read everything. Read the learn more sections. It helps educate you on everything that we do and. Regardless of what it is, we're here to bring you high-quality supplements at affordable pricing and educate you along the way. Hello from the Bahamas. See Ooh, you. Favorite place. See Bye, you, guys. guys. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.